Hypertonic saline and elevated intracranial pressure ICP management. Please check the description for disclaimer and some bibliography. Salt, or sodium chloride, diluted in water can be mixed in different concentrations. Normal saline, or 0.9% saline is a familiar crystalloid solution. Meaning, every 100 milliliters of water has 0 0.9 grams of salt. Solutions greater than 0.9% are called hypertonic. For the management of symptomatic elevated ICP, 3% hypertonic saline is a common solution. That is, 3 grams of salt in 100 milliliters of water. Hypertonic saline is used to increase the amount of sodium in blood. blood. The osmolarity of normal serum is 140 milli equivalents. The osmolarity of normal saline is 154 milli equivalents. The osmolarity of 3% saline is 1027 milli equivalents. In turn, the elevated serum sodium in cells with normally functioning cell membranes draw water out of those cells and into the extracellular compartment, including the intravascular compartment. Thus, just like mannitol, hypertonic saline leads to shrinkage of the normal brain to allow the edematous brain to have more space, thus, lowering the ICP. The elevated serum sodium also leads to red blood cells shrinkage, which improves their deformability and increases the ability to circulate through tighter capillaries, improving oxygen and glucose delivery and removal of carbon dioxide and other cellular wastes. Sodium chloride is excreted via the kidney. The kidney excretes sodium via the sodium potassium ATPase transporter. The sodium potassium ATPase transporter molecule is coded for in the cell DNA. When the renal cells detect the change, up or down, in serum sodium, then it has to adjust the DNA mechanism increasing or decreasing sodium potassium ATPase transporter production. This adjustment takes time, in general 4 to 8 hours. Because of this, continuously infused hypertonic saline gradually every 4 to 8 hours. The ICP effect of hypertonic saline is similar to that of mannitol. Hypertonic saline is easier to use, as it does not induce as much diuresis, and has a much lower risk of hypovolemia. Hypertonic saline can increase the intravascular volume, in a more sustained fashion, as water is drawn into the vascular space from the cells. cells. Hypertonic saline induces the release of vasopressin, leading to free water retention, and diluting, some, down its own induced hypernatremia. The initial bolus can be 250 to 500 milliliters over 15 to 30 minutes, with an initial infusion of 50 milliliters per hour. Patients with decreased GFR such as those older than 6 and 65, or those with renal disease, may need lower hourly infusion doses of hypertonic saline, such as half the hourly infusion dose. Every kidney is different, and will need individualized adjustments. Monitoring and titration is the key. General goal ranges are an ICP target between 5 and 20 mm of mercury. An ACPPP of 55 and 75 mm of mercury. If ICP monitor is available then observe and record the ICP before and 30 minutes after hypertonic saline administration. Either way, monitor and observe the neurologic exam, including GCS and pupils. Some side effects include thrombophlebitis, extravasation, hypervolemia, therefore, be careful for, be careful in CHF, COPD and renal insufficiency. Also AKI, which is typically transient. Others include IV site infection, hyperchloremia, acidemia, hypomagnesemia, and hypophosphatemia. For titration, draw serum sodium every 4 to 6 hours. Follow the sliding scale for initial guidance. Also, monitor the vital signs, GCS, pupils, the neurologic deficits, ICP of monitor available. If ICP monitor is not available, then the monitoring is of the clinical exam. Monitor intake output, avoiding negative balances. Monitor the systemic and cerebral perfusion. And cardiopulmonary. Also, monitor the electrolytes every 12 to 24 hours. Potassium, sodium, magnesium, phosphorus, BUN, and creatinine. Clinical goals should always be in a range, such as systolic blood pressure of 140 to 160, or serum sodium between 150 and 155. Do not take or use goals such as greater than 150 or less than 150. This is clinically inadequate. Hypertonic saline can only be administered via central line access. Never infuse 3% saline or 23.4% saline through a peripheral vein. In a pinch, when there is no central access, one loading dose of mannitol can be given. To temporize, remember to maintain normal volemia. Hypertonic saline is only used in the ICU setting. Monitor serum sodium labs every 6 hours. When serum sodium is within the goal range set by the physician for three consecutive lab draws, consider decreasing lab checks to every eight hours. Do not monitor serum osmolarity labs for patients receiving 3% saline infusions.
Mannitons. This measurement is for monitoring mannitol. Do not order or monitor urine sodium or osmolarity. It is going to be high, and is of no clinical value. It is key to know the amount of sodium, in grams per hour, and per 24 hours. 3% saline, has 3 gram per 100 milliliters of water. So, if the patient is receiving 50 milliliters per hour of 3%, then she is getting 1.5 grams per hour of salt, and 36 grams per day. To wean the hypertonic saline infusion, go slow, such as 15 to 20 milliliters per hour every 4 to 6 hours, recall the renal adaptation. Once hypertonic saline at 30 milliliters per hour, that is 0.7 to 0.9 grams of salt, 0.9% saline at 75 to 90 milliliters per hour, and continue titration down, as usual for normal saline. Since, there is a theoretical risk of hyponatremia if weaning too fast, kidney adaptation is slow, then monitor serum sodium every 8 hours for 3 or 4 times, once the hypertonic saline infusion is completed. When, when tapering 3% saline rate down, do not taper too fast and try to not stop 3% sodium chloride abruptly. This increases the risk of cerebral edema, seizures and hyponatremia. Thank you. More in the